Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay. Today, we're going to go over how to make a remote controlled rover. This is going to be the first phase of creating a fully automated drone. First off, let me introduce you to my workshop. We are currently on the planet Titan. I've set up these basic automated doors that whenever it senses me, it opens. But once we're inside, the timer block attached to it allows them to close again. Here is a simple setup. We have some scattered tools over here just in case you miss a bolt or get confused with what you really need to use. And on this side there's some tools. If I hit this button, it lifts my platform for building the rover drone in the first place. We don't want it to start on the ground because we need to add wheels to this thing. If you're just building a flying drone instead, you won't necessarily need this platform. I start out with a merge block and it automatically attaches and locks into place as long as your build merge block is on at the time. Then we're going to expand this chassis out. We're just going to use one line and I am using heavy blocks on this because with most rovers in a low gravity situation, if you use the lightweight blocks and don't have anything else on this rover, it will have a tendency of flipping over regardless of what you try to do. And we'll just finish by putting a bunch of small batteries on this. Since I'm not planning on driving this a long distance or anything, small batteries, once they're fully charged, will be plenty to power this thing around for a while. Once you have all the batteries on, it's time to kind of plan out your wheels. For this, I'm just using a standard 3x3 three three wheel. Make sure that you put the right wheels on the right side and the left wheels on the left side, or it may affect your steering. I guess we don't have enough room for four, so I'll change this to three. With three wheels, you get more traction, especially when you're going over heavy terrain. You may have a tendency of getting stuck a little bit easier if there's peaks in the terrain. But overall, it does give you more traction and more power to get up steeper slopes. There, that should do it. This thing is not going to be too fancy because it is just a simple demonstration. So we're going to go ahead and put the remote and then the other components we need to drive this thing. Whenever I put a remote control, I try to put it in the center so that way I can add a camera afterwards and have remote viewing at the same time I'm remote controlling. Then we'll add this ore detector so we can see what's out on this planet and mark different places for ore deposits. And finally an antenna here. The antenna allows us to use the remote control. You have to have an antenna or you cannot access your remote control on the rover. Then I think I'm just going to add some blocks here to kind of weigh us down even more. These are all heavy blocks as I mentioned before. If you are on the Earth-like planet, you may not have to use heavy blocks. Lightweight blocks should do the trick. Just going to make this side look like the other side. And maybe fill in the sides. Just to give it a little bit of contour. Whoops, missed that one. Just to give it a little contour so it doesn't look like uh, just a plain buggy. For me, I always try to build the most important elements first before I put any cosmetic blocks on here. If you start putting steel cosmetic blocks on first and build the shell, you may run out of room for the rest of the components. Depending on if it's a new build or you're trying to replicate 
a build that already exists or an item that already exists. Always make sure to put steel blocks on the front of your rover. That way, when you're using the camera to guide it, you don't run into anything and destroy the rest of your buggy. That would definitely be a problem. There, that should be it. For the camera, when you extend it out with the angle blocks, you still have a wide range of viewing, but it helps protect that camera, like I said, in case you run into something. Here, we're going to add a light, just to make it easier to see, especially if you're traveling at night. And final touches, just filling it in. The back isn't as important, but if you do a lot of reversing, you may want to put some protective blocks around this merge block in case you run into anything also. There we are. Maybe a couple on the bottom. For the most part, rovers are not that complicated. And the difference between a rover that you must drive and the one that you can control is putting either a flight seat or control seat or putting a remote control. On any rover, you can put both. So at some point, if you wanted to drive this specifically yourself directly on the rover, I would put a control seat or a flight seat. If you want the option to do both, also still add the remote in the front with the camera on it. Doesn't look too bad. Let's go ahead and lower this thing. Once we lower it, I have it set up where it automatically disengages the small merge block and releases, as you can see here. It's a fairly smooth operation. And when you look into your terminal, you'll see the new small grid that appeared. You can go ahead and rename this if you want for ease of access. But for now, I'm just going to leave it and I'm just going to adjust my wheels. Since we are starting off on ice, I'm going to lower it all the way down to 10% power. And I think that's it. Oh yeah, the ore detector. We want that to put at max range. Small ore detectors don't have a long range and they usually start out around 25 meters. And if you have anything deeper than, say, 50 meters, you're not going to find it. On the bottom of the list of the order detector, it also gives you the option to transmit through the antenna. I definitely marked that. So your antenna will boost the signal in its range. Let's go outside and test this thing out. All we have to do is go back to the terminal, remote access, and hit the control button. Ah, this darn door is already started going back up, but that's fine. I assign the camera as view only. So whenever I hit the number one key, my camera will turn on and I'm still connected to the rover remote. As you can see here. Just have to get close enough to activate the door. There we go. And once it's down all the way we'll be able to drive this straight out. I exit the camera mode by hitting the F key. To re-enter, all I have to do is hit the number one key, and there you are, we're cruising across the ice. If everything's working correctly, you will see the ice pop up itself, saying ice at a certain range. I would definitely recommend using something that you already know of to test to make sure your system is working before you try to go find other ore. Otherwise, you never know if you're just driving on top of it and never know it. It is fun to drive rovers. So if you have a very creative rover, it'd be cool to see it. 
and maybe test it out on the ice. I know some people try to play ice hockey with them, and it'd be awesome if we had the additional AI to be able to control the rovers, just like your flight rovers. You could set up a whole game with just AI. So for here, we're just going to test out a GPS. Believe it or not, if you're remote accessing, you can click on new from current position and mark your location of the drone. So you don't actually have to leave your station or anything to find your ore. I always click off it. Let's go cruising around just a little bit to see if I can find some other resources. Oh, we just saw them pop up. Overall, it's wonderfully convenient to use a rover that has a remote because you don't have to leave the station, especially if you're in a place with very low oxygen or no oxygen at all, and you can safely stay in your home station. I think I'll worry about marking those later. But here's what I mean by the little peak areas. It may jostle you about because it hits the bottom of your rover. So either you can switch to a 5x5 wheel or slightly change the variation of your rover and you won't have that problem. With three wheels though, you will get more traction and have a lot more control across ice. We're just going to cruise back to our garage and that'll be about it. Overall, the build, as you can see, only takes about 5-10 minutes and it saves you a lot of time of just randomly flying around or having to establish a huge antenna array or anything like that in order to find brand new ore. Or even flying around your space pod to find more ore. Whoa, almost hit it there. I think I'll just leave it out here for now. These doors seem to be a bit finicky. Well, it's been nice working with you today. We successfully built a remote control drone, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any comments or suggestions in the comment section. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for the next episode. I appreciate it.